Hi guys, my name is Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Now today, uh, after our videos around trust and, and such like the last couple of days, um, I wanted to touch in on a new story that I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen by now by the time this video goes up. Um, but it's uh, new data from a University of Maryland study shows that divorce rates have fallen by 18% between 2008 to 2016 as Generation X and Millennials are moving slower when it comes to marriage, according to Bloomberg. Um, in which case, I, uh, I want to have a, a bit of a chat around this, um, just because uh, there are an awful lot of factors towards it, but also I feel like there's um, some healthy stuff to kind of take away from this, and also some things that don't necessarily get talked about a lot, but which uh, maybe need some, some, uh, some time in the light, as it were. So what the what these studies have, have shown, another one uh, by the, where was it, uh, Bowling Green's National Center for Family and Marriage Research, um, has demonstrated that baby boomers, previous generations, um, are divorcing at a much higher rate, um, with the divorce rate tripling for people in uh, old age um, between 1990 and 2015. Um, which, again, part of me isn't surprised by this at all, because a lot of status was put on being married. Um, a lot of um, kind of economic uh, focus was put on marriage uh, as well. And, you know, it's it, in more recent years, especially we can see this in some of the political landscape, where things like gay marriage are being um, brought in more and more readily across the world, um, you know, because people of younger generations have grown up more and more and more and more with the idea of you should marry or sh you should be with the person that you love, where at times it was more you should get married because it's expected of you. You know, so there's that change, that shift. And so, you know, now that there's more freedom, um, you, that, that divorce rate in older people is higher, divorce rate in low, in younger people is going to be lower because they've maybe got more of that mindset of being with the person that they want to be with. But also, let's think about it this way. Economically, marriage is fucking expensive. Like, the, the, um, the, the marriage industry in the UK, the marriage industry in the US, they have TV shows around them. They have so much that gets thrown into them. Why? I don't know. I'm personally there's a, there's a part of me that goes kind of bar humbug to marriage it's a very very old kind of um set of systems that i don't feel is fit for purpose anymore especially under laws um that are, that are currently operating i'm glad that some of them are changing over time anyway but it's a case of you know of my opinion for me to get the legal protections with a partner um I would be more than happy to just walk in, sign some paperwork and leave again and get on with the rest of my life. In which case, if this seems slightly slanted, <laughs> then that might be why. But ultimately, one of the things that I want to highlight is marriage is crazy expensive. And so when it comes to um, raising kids and, and doing other things, uh, getting together with that person that you want to be with, it doesn't always necessarily come down to marriage. You know, as was observed, you know, younger married couples are, are sticking together more, although young, many young couples are opting to live and raise children together um, whilst ignoring marriage. Because, again, it's expensive. It's expensive. It's extravagant. It's not necessary. Um, but at times it can be helpful. Uh, but again, there are still also other ways around that as well. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff there to kind of pay attention to. Um, but some of the things that, that sit in my mind that need to be highlighted is that another study not so long ago highlighted that things like polygamous relationships, uh, trios or, or webs of, of people in uh, polygamous relationships to one degree or another, or open more open relationships, uh, are on the rise to one degree or another. And, you know, that's all very well and good. Um, you know, everyone should be able to choose their own lifestyle to one degree or another. But unfortunately, it's something that in many countries, even countries that are now looking to um, 
just just open up marriage to people as a, as an institution or civil partnerships as well as a comparable thing with certain, with slightly different protections in certain areas but otherwise for the most part fulfilling the same function but as completely um kind of secular and removed from religion and and uh, tradition side of things um you know it's it's um something to to take into account that in some of the instances if people wanted to marry more than one person to enable that that um protection to be over children of say a trio then you know it, it becomes a difficult thing and a thing that is not going to be managed because there are still so many objections around such things you know and it's it's a case of i wonder if you compared the the, the information from these studies based on just the younger you are the more likely you are to stick together with your partner statistically speaking the older you are from from previous generations from the baby boomer generation you're likely to split with your partner as you get older all very well and good but then i would love to see a comparison between uh, relationships that are um, more than more than just a couple compared to those that are just a couple just to see what the the differences are you know and this is the thing information like this is going to come out because this is industry information even if the the university of maryland was the one that did the analysis the that highlighted the 18 percent change from 2008 to 2016 um as said the divorce industry is huge the wedding industry is also huge you know potentially if you've got a couple that splits you've got two more double dip customers into the wedding market yeah so it's it's a case of you know the these markets these these industries are going to continue to thrive and develop anyway um but i would be interested to see what the the overall statistical impact would be of non-conventional non-traditional relationships you know just for the sake of going okay well actually we're finding that these people are staying together even more or they're not staying together as much or um economically speaking more weddings are happening when you've got this kind of relationship going on or that kind of relationship going on but also i feel like there's one other big uh thing to highlight here and that is the you know, we've got this collection of, of younger people who can't afford to get married, might want to, but can't afford to. So that even if they then get to being married and then they find out that they don't want to be. Yeah, that actually everything up until that was just an extended honeymoon period. Everything was rose tinted right up until they got married and then they absolutely loathe each other. Or life changes. They move from, you know, being just the two of them and enjoying life together after they've just managed to get the money to get married. And then they find that as they have kids, they don't like each other anymore. You know, and they split afterwards due to the pressures and all the rest of it. Like, how many younger people in today's economy where they're not going to be as well off the world is changing in ways that they they are having to struggle with that that is often not decided by their generation anyway um you you've got all kinds of other uh problems like certain industries going out of business certain things being turned to you know shifted into automation rather than using people so people are being laid off you know all of those worries all those concerns all those things that the plague the younger generations because we've got to live with them still for a good amount of our life and how many of those people then have the money to get divorced because divorce is still an expensive process you know it's and even when uh under certain uh in certain situations under certain laws and so on and so forth there are ways to annul a marriage after time spent separated and whatever else that's all very well and good, but that's still, for statistics of these purposes at any rate, maybe skewing things one way or the other. And that's if they can actually afford to separate in the first place. Potentially they, they 
become very reliant on one another purely because of the economic situation. I'd love to see a deeper dive into these numbers that unfortunately just don't come with any of the articles or any of the, the published stuff on it. Um, but as a result, you know, what are you what are your thoughts on on these numbers, guys? I'm sure you guys have seen the the news stories around. Oh, pardon me. I know uh, Philip DeFranco covered it uh, briefly in one of his videos last week, um, which is which was I believe the evening before I'm recording this now, or after I found it this morning on Facebook. But it's a case of you know. What are your thoughts on this? Why do you think younger people are sticking together? Is it because, I, as I've said, you know, we've had this greater focus in growing up on just being with the person that we care about, being with the person that we love, because we have so much more uncertainty and hardship ahead of us uh, due to some of the mess that's been caused by, uh, by certain people uh, in certain political positions of power, should we say? Um, you know, is it the, the as a result of that, we think out a little bit further ahead? Is it because we've got so much access to information, we can see these numbers and go, I don't want to be like that. I'm going to do it this way. You know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on all of this stuff, guys. Because, you know, considering we were talking about um, trust and we've been talking about getting relationships, uh, kind of getting over our problems getting into good relationships and maintaining them and all that kind of thing, uh, especially in regards to sex the last couple of weeks. But since I started the channel, that's been something that's been kind of frequently returning as a topic for us to work on um, because they're just so important to us. You know, we're social creatures. We have developed to be more and more monogamous over time, um, in which case it's like, yeah, fine. Well, how do we maintain these things? And these numbers are indicative of people buying into the, uh, the, the working together, the developing together, developing a life together to one extent or another. Not entirely, obviously. Um, so as a result, you know, what are your thoughts? What are your opinions? What are your uh, ideas around your own relationships and things? You know, um, as I've said, marriage to me is very much just a contract for extra protections uh, between two people that actually want to stick together. It's a I'm not going to let you down contract for your relationship. Um, and I feel like that's all it should be. But there's so much pomp and circumstance and tradition and all kinds of daftness that has built these huge industries in the US and UK and all over the world, to be fair, around weddings and divorces and things like that. Um that you know everyone has their own opinion like i'm completely removed from the religious side i feel like the religious side is kind of a set of traditions that we should we, we could quite happily do without a set of ideas that we don't really need anymore but you know i'm sure that there are other people that, that don't just buy into them because it's what their religious tells them to buy into but you know that they find real meaning in them um in which case you know all power to those people but you know from my perspective this story makes a lot of like these numbers make a lot of sense um but there's not enough of these numbers for us to know exactly what we're looking at here and so with my attitude and opinions towards marriage um anyway like the the whole party aspect around a wedding fine sure i can appreciate that people want to celebrate uh, that big kind of milestone, if they want to count it as a milestone. But, you know, to me, it's a case of going, well, no, that's, that's, that's again, it's something for the two of you. You know, as I was talking about um, not kissing and telling earlier in the week, you know, that's you two deciding to be like that with each other is, is pretty much just for you guys, maybe for your family as well at most. That's it. You know, your friends and your, 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 co-workers and whoever else shouldn't really come into it in my view but you know looking at these numbers apparently younger people are doing a better job anyway so i'm hoping the the we see a continual trend of when people find the people that they want to be with they stick together and they do a great job it's one of the reasons why i went into uh, relationship coaching early on why i still have this fascination for it and why i still talk about it a lot on the channel now and why you guys keep asking for it so you know it's it's hopefully 
between just our general attitudes, maybe some of my videos, probably not, um, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe to some of you, some of my videos, um, but he's hoping that we, we just continue on this upward trend of having these meaningful, great relationships. And hopefully the world will catch up with the variety of different types of relationships as well, to a degree. I understand how they're more complicated by a long stretch from a legal standpoint. But, you know, hopefully we can we can see that further development over the coming years as well. And, and good stuff can happen. And I hope that maybe next five years, ten years, that I get to see these statistics again. Maybe something cool pop out of us from those as well, saying that we're doing a great job, or at the very least, we're stuck with the people that we decide to get married to. Again, it could be economic, it might not be. Who knows? There's no data to say otherwise in this stuff. I'd love to see that data. If you're if you're a researcher at one of these places, then please do the do the research. Tell us more. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you. I'm gonna do. In fact, I'm going to do another live stream tomorrow, thinking about it, in which case we can talk about trust and relationship and trust issues in relationships and kissing and telling and all the stuff. that. We, if you want to send me in the, in the chat weird things about the, the various memes and stuff that you enjoy as well, considering that's what we broke up the week with at the beginning, feel free. Live stream tomorrow. Let's Let's do that as well. But otherwise, guys, thank you very much, and I will see you in the video later. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video or found it interesting, then please drop us a like, share this video, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the video later. Take care.